No. <laughs> Not, not, not that no. guy. <laughs> Especially with two beers in me. Not and after fifty miles. Two, two beers. Are we revising history here? This is number two. Really? Yeah. I'm disappointed. Well, no, sorry, no. This is number three. Oh, I've, yeah. I've, I've consumed two. Yeah, sorry. I can't count already. <laughs> this is a good start. Great. This is a good start, and uh, great interview. Brian Powell of I Run Far here with uh, Alex Varner after his win at the 2015 Lake Sonoma 50 Mile. Holy shit, dude. Thank you. That was a good run. Yeah, it went really well. <laughs> I had no, no, it went about as well as it could have, I think. Well, when you win, that's generally what happens. Yeah. Because you also set a course record. Yeah, that was um, kind of less on my mind, uh, especially in the last mile. My uh, my old roommate and my high school buddy shows up, and he's he runs a bit. Uh, he started running more now, um, but he was sitting out there, and he was like, go run it. And I was like, fuck you, Paul. <laughs> can I say that? You can say fuck all you, right, Paul. Right, yeah. Fuck you, Paul. So I said, I said that to him, <laughs> and then he just starts laughing even more. <laughs> And then he take, then he sprints away and takes the shortcut that I can't take on the road. And then Billy Yang's there, and he and I hear Paul yell back, "Go for the course record!" I was like, "Fuck the course record!" <laughs> I had no idea. I thought it was one seven or six ten, um, yeah. around there. And I didn't. I wasn't really looking at my watch. I looked at it with a mile to go, and it said six oh two. And yeah. so I was like, "All right, I'm, I'm not. I really wasn't worried about that point. At that point, forty nine miles in, you're just like, I just want it to be over." Preferably win, but yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that was the other thing is, is you know, Carrara Passage and the last K last year, and so I was sitting there and I was like, please don't, please don't, please no, please no, please no, <laughs> just because you don't know the car. No, oh, no, no, I did not. I had no idea. I, I heard nothing. All I knew was that uh, a 38 Debo was doing the, had the sat phone for was it you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said sat phone, and I just heard you got at least three minutes. Nobody's come through up ahead, and that was the only time check I ever got. Yeah, and I was like, all right, three minutes. Like worst case scenario, that's what I'm assuming. And you had. Nine or ten minutes there. I did, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, I have no idea. Um, and so, unfortunately, after that, literally about a mile later, my hamstring decided to get really angry. And it went from, oh, this is great, to I might walk the next 12 miles in. Which would not be ideal. No. Uh, you know, and it, it was like, oh, shoot. Like, all right. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 when I, I didn't really make a move off of Bach, uh, but his first 50 mile on that course rough i mean i was here last year he didn't blow up no he didn't blow up it's just like it's just a hard course especially if you don't know it and it was um, your first 50 last year so yeah you know exactly you're talking yeah about exactly it. i was like i know i know how that goes i know right where he is um you know mentally physically um but i was just like oh shoot you know and i i, I was okay with it because i wanted to win my my goal was to put myself in a position to do so i was clearly there and I was like, well, I can't, you know, you can't do any more than run for it if you think you got it. Yep. And so I was like, all right, you know, if this happens, this happens. Life was meant to go that way. And um, I, I took a goo, I, I ate about 10 salt tabs at Wolfo. Just, just five, and then took another five and just so like washed them down. Like 17, 18 miles to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that was the problem was, or that wasn't the problem, but that was what kind of vexed me was, you know, not, you know, six miles later. Uh, my hamstring was cramping, and I was like, well, I thought I took some salt, maybe that didn't help, and then I ate a goo, and then it cleared up. Hmm. And then my quad started, both quads started threatening, and then I kind of got them under control, and then the hamstring started barking again. Um, so it was very touch and go, touch and go towards the end. Um, the last, like, eight or ten miles were all the downhills were just, just awful, like, you Excruciating know. Excruciating pain, or was it more worry of cramping? Worry of cramping. Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I can deal with this pain. As long as it doesn't turn into a cramp. Yeah. Um, and I, I stopped to stretch out a couple of times. But the problem was, was my hamstring was so tight that I would go to pull my leg up and the hamstring would start to cramp as I was stretching my quad out. Um, yeah. So it didn't work very well. Um, but I, you know, I had enough time back. And it was it was a reassuring to see, to go down to No Name, or, or uh, Island View. Yeah. To go down there and come back up and not see anybody. Just a little down back going yeah. to four mile, yeah. 45. It's, it's like a quarter eight, mile eight. out, a quarter mile back. But then you know you have four minutes. Or, yeah, and that was or, my thought. And last year I saw Carrara there, and just as I was going down, he was coming up, and I was just so out of it. If I could have said something to him, I would have been like, do not worry about me. I'm going back. <laughs> I think he put five or six minutes on me in the last five miles. Well, he had a pretty year. good close. Yeah, he had, yeah, especially with that that kick down. Which is um, funny, because you say that because you had four minutes, and you know he put five or six minutes yeah, on you exactly. last year yeah. from there to the yeah, finish. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, oh, God, I got to go. <laughs> and so you know, my goal was to get out of there and get around that first turn. That so way, no one can see. Yeah, that way, you know, that way they're wondering where I am. They see me, they're like, oh, shoot, he's not here. He must be up ahead, farther up ahead than I thought. And so that, you know, just kind of mentally, mm -hmm. um, that was a little bit of a boost to get around that. Um, and yeah, it was just, you know, I, I knew what the, the last couple miles were like, uh, which helped a lot too. Just kind of knowing that it's a steady grind up. Um, that last mile is exposed and rocky. And um, I was not running vertically at that point. I was kind of stumbling over my feet. 
like just don't trip, just don't trip. Yeah. Um, yeah, Billy was out there catching me swearing on camera. Um, just not a happy camper at that point. Did you ever think back to casually chatting Wednesday morning? Well, I'm gonna hurt the last ten miles. Everybody hurts the last ten miles. Yeah, that was that was that was that was in there. Like, um, <clears throat> yeah, with about you know hitting um, hitting 38, going through there, I was like, all right, this is it. You know, it's everybody's. You know, you got through here, you got 12 miles to go, and everybody's in a pain cave. So is that reassuring somewhat? No, yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And my thought was, you know, it, it hurts enough. I've been in fourth or fifth and been hurting, and. I'd rather have a couple minutes and be hurting because everybody's hurting and maybe I can, you know, eke it out if, if, if I hurt a little, a little less. Mm -hmm. Um, and it worked out. You gotta be pretty happy with it. I'm stoked just over the moon with it. Yeah. Um, it's, it hasn't definitely hasn't sunk in yet. Um, but it's, yeah, it's fantastic. I, yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better day, a better race. So when we talked on Wednesday, you, uh, said, Last year, both your first 50 here mm -hmm. and your first 100 at Western States. Yeah. You had to play wisely, conservatively. Yeah. You were a little less conservative today. You weren't, you know, balls to the wall from yeah. the gun. But yeah, yeah. you were, you know. I, I made a conscious decision to kind of do that. I yeah. thought, you know, I coming off coming off the road, you know, two and a half miles in when you hit that single track, I wanted to put myself up towards the front. Yeah. Um, and everybody's running the same pace, mm -hmm. you know, but but there's a, a can be a 100 meter difference. Yeah. And that's mm. a big difference. If somebody moves off the front and you're at the back, you got to fight your way past six or seven guys to kind of, if you want to cover Hanger them. Yeah. 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 So it was nice being up there and we kind of, Aish, uh, Bach and I kind of, you know, Walmsley was off the front immediately. And you just um, said, let him go. Or? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, he's, he won JFK. So there was, there was, oh shoot, like maybe we're getting Zach Millard again. <laughs> it might happen. But, um, you know, we went, I want to say, you know, I mean, he was out of sight for, 15, 16, 17 miles, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and we heard, you know, at one point I was kind of looking at my watch and seeing when he was up ahead while he was still in sight. It was 30 seconds and all of a sudden we hit 12 and it was a minute and a half. Okay. You know, let's, let's see what happens. And coming out of, is it Wolfo at 17, 18? Yeah. Um, up that big climb. Um, he was just coming back on the climbs. He was just bombing the downhills. Really? And we could, we started to see him and he was kind of running slower on the uphills, and then he, you know, hit the uphill or hit the down, and he would just take off. And he would put, you know, at one point I think we were we got within twenty seconds of him, and then I looked at my watch again, and he pushed it out to forty or fifty within a quarter mile, just on you know rolling, bit aggressive, down. yeah. But hey, you know, it was it was he he went out and he wanted to wanted to go for it, and then we kind of went by him, and um, you know, he he held up really well for fifth. I was really impressed with that. Um, considering that is a really good point. Like, I mean, seeing him at when we when we went by him, I just thought like he, his goose is cooked. I mean, he's he's he he, he was a full like Christmas dinner. When yeah, I saw yeah, him yeah. And dirty. and to, to rally, he rallied, and um, I mean, that's fantastic. You know, it's it's an impressive, impressive run uh, yeah. to kind of go out that hard and just hang on in this field. Because there were a lot of people who went out sort of in that lead group. I mean, with experience. I mean, Rob Craw. I mean, not decades of experience, but yeah. Rob Craw and Mike yeah. H and. You know, the day turns around and they're sitting at Warm Springs and Walmsley's racing to the finish. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it was, you know, and you have when we're out there, we have no idea of any of the drops. No, um, you know, you it's 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 one of the you know you're kind of running blind off the front, um, which is a good problem to have. And you know, yeah. if you're if you're trying to win, it's a good problem to have. Um, but it, yeah, it was uh, you know it was kind of surprising to get to cross the finish line and see like Carr and had a text from Aish. And uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, all right, I guess like several people dropped out. Yeah. And I, you know, Matt, you know, it was funny. Tim was, Tim Tolleson was running with Max and he said literally seven miles in, they both just went, this is going to be a long day. Just Max said it was just eternal out to the, out to, out to. Max walked across that firm, that stream crossing at mile 12. Like, yeah. Literally like. Yeah. And you, sometimes you have those days. Yes. And you know, it's, it's, um, some people decide to pull plugs some people don't and you know, more power to them for, for powering through. So on the on the sort of running a little more aggressively and confident side, where does this leave you? you know, still a couple months out, but for Western states, um, I, I I plan to do a similar, have a similar tactic. Um, I've got Worlds the four weeks before, um, which is fifty like two or three miles with seventeen thousand feet of climbing. Yeah. Um, so and it's it's kind of flats and real steep ups and downs. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I've kind of. You know, as as a result of that, it's like how many times do you get to qualify for Worlds team? So that's kind of become that kind of kind of became the priority when I got on there. Okay. So I, I want to run well at Western, um, but if I don't, eh, I, I'm not too worried about it. 
Um, I think, you know, kind of the, the longer term goal is I'm going to CCC in August. So yeah. I'd like to be full strength for that. Gotcha. Even if, even though I'm, even though I'm just going to treat it as purely like a course scouting route, because I'd like to run UTMB in 2016. Gotcha. So, um, so CCC. You're still, will, I mean, like last year you were conservative in your races. This year, you're learning more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I have a little bit more confidence. Um, working with Coop has helped a ton. Um, you know, just kind of having having some of these workouts under my belt that I was I was running like track and cross country workouts a year ago at this point. Um, you know, getting on the track on Tuesdays and running intervals, and then. Friday, I got out and do a tempo, and Saturday, do a long run, kind of the coll collegiate system, and uh, that's completely changed. So you've and gone from the VO2 max sessions to the tempo sessions. Yeah. What's next? Um, I don't know. I haven't got my schedule yet. Coop, what's next? <laughs> um, <laughs> I know there's probably some steady state stuff in there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one, two hour runs that just kind of, not tempo, obviously, but just a little, like a step faster than so like, an easy run. So like marathon pace? Yeah. Uh, no, probably not even that oh, okay. fast. Uh, maybe... A little more comfortable than that you know it'll be on trails but which is interesting because it's like a reverse sharpening yeah system yeah, yeah exactly exactly so you're at the finish yeah you just won like regardless of what you've done in the past and in roads and track yeah and your biggest win yeah hands down what do you do like, i mean like you're not your biggest win like it was your best race yeah oh clearly. yeah oh absolutely um yeah my 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 crispy cream challenge is no longer my strongest pr <laughs> <laughs> well, what was your Krispy Kreme? Uh, it was five miles, well, and a dozen donuts in twenty-eight thirty-five. So you're my two and a half. Fuck you, Alex. <laughs> a dozen donuts, two and a half back. That was that was my strongest PR until today. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. But uh, so what are you gonna do to ce celebrate? Uh, um, hang out with some of the Nike teammates and whoever else is around. I think some of the Hoka folks are sticking around. Um, do you want to come to Bear Republic? We'll be there this evening. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what are you drinking right now? What's the, what's the celebratory brew? Uh, this is Sierra Nevada. It's not, it's not, it's not a picky uh, bar. It's not a picky brew. Uh, this is Sierra Nevada. But that's a good idea. Lauren, get on that. <laughs> <laughs> picky brew. Um, Sierra Nevada right now, I had... Um, no, I didn't get any... You did not have a 395? I had a 395 on Thursday at the SFRC event. Um, One of my favorite But brews. I had an Nkasi earlier, and... Um, I had something else earlier. What's the, what's the over under on that? A double magnum of Wilson uh, um, wine making it back to to an hour away from here. Oh, it'll make it home. I think the uh, the Gaylords have kindly offered their home because they have uh, Dakota. Your your magnum is still there from two years, and the statute of limitations is running out real quick. So and that, like, that's, a, that's a beer or a wine that ages very well, but it's not going to age like two forever. Year, two years is, is you know is, is is pushing it especially when you just said yeah hang on to this for me a little bit yeah. um so last year i was lucky enough to get zach miller's magnum um because he stayed with me the two nights before and the night after the yeah. race and he doesn't really drink but yeah. he wanted the bottle and so he said well you hang on to me hang on to it for me for now and i think fourth of july came around and we were at um my buddy mark mcmanus's place which is now where i'm living um and his like he lives upstairs i live downstairs um but we called him and i said hey like can we can we drink this he goes, oh yeah, by all means, go ahead, just save the bottle. So the bottle's gathering dust, but we it, it serves like 40 people. I mean, it's remarkable how many people get that, a solid cup of wine out of, or a solid glass of if wine. If you've never seen of. a double magnum. It's like it the size is. of my torso, probably bigger. I'm not a very big person. You, you, are, you are a tiny person, <laughs> and it is a big bottle of wine. Um, yeah, so we have, we have two of those to go through, unless Dakota shows up and, and takes it Then home. you really don't need to bring one home. That's, I think that's my, my, <laughs> my takeaway from this discussion right We'll here. see how it goes. Apparently the, uh, the tab's on uh, Pat Warhane tonight. Power Hane, thank you, Vern. <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> you didn't hear that, folks. Uh, speaking of Nike, um, Nike team seems to come out in force. Is it like a particular set of courses that just like suits the runners, or is it like you saying, let's go run Sonoma and Worlds and um, way too cool? Or what? So what's the setup? Because it, it differs on different teams. Yeah, there's. It's funny. There's. There hasn't really been kind of a push towards any one race. Mm -hmm. um, I think last year we kind of, uh, I know Vargo and I ran cool last year and that was kind of, that was my first race on the team. Uh, close to his, if not his first race on the mm -hmm. team as well. Um, and then they made a push to like, let's get, if you guys want to, like if you can race Sonoma, um, do it. Like okay. let's try to get a presence there and just kind of announce our entry into this. Um, so it was kind of like a little, little yeah, I, yeah, I know that, like I, I wouldn't have signed up for Sonoma if I hadn't been on the Nike team. And I emailed Pat, because uh, last year, I think, what was it? I think Matt Lay won Rocky Raccoon, and I just got super pumped, like, 9 o'clock on Saturday night. I was like, I'm setting up for Sonoma. And I emailed, I texted Pat and just said, I'm running Boston the week after, but 
you know, is like I'm thinking about signing up for Sonoma, and he texted back and goes, "Well, you're on the trail team." That's all he said. I'm like, all right, done. Like, I'm signing up for Sonoma. <laughs> Let's do a 50 miler. Um, and so it worked out that we got we got a group of guys out, and um, I think it just kind of certain races, you know, they don't they don't specify you should be here, mm-hmm. um, which is which is kind of nice that we get to kind of. But well, like UTMB this year. It, 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 I mean, literally, UTMB, CCC, like yeah, the it, literally, it literally just kind of came together. Like really? you know, it was it was Pat Pat went over there last year to kind of scope it out, yeah. and he gave you know, and he came back and just said, hey. This is awesome. You guys should do it. And that so was it wasn't it. like you guys should do it. No, it's it, like, was, it was. It was like this is fantastic. You should experience this. Like, if we can make it happen, let's do it. Yeah. So okay. a bunch of us got kind of excited and we're like, let's sign up for it. Because there's definitely like teams that, you know, like you two guys go there and you two guys go there. Yeah. There's there's like, there's, no, there's none of that. Yeah. Um, I I've I've never been kind of told like you should run this. Um, yeah. You know. I mean, again, the the choice I had after this last year with Western was was mine. Mm-hmm. Um, they said, you know, obviously we'd love you to run it. You know, Laney's in, Sally's in, um, but you know, it's 100 miles. It's really far, um, not according to Carl Melter, but <laughs> but it's really far. And you know, it'd be great if we had a, a good presence there. And so I said, okay, you know, I'm, I might never qualify for Western States again. Uh, I take you know take the ticket. So yeah, they've been very gracious about you know where where you want to race. I think Sally did that race in like Cinque Terre last week or two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, she's not racing here. Cause yeah, she exactly, because like... she did that. Um, and it's, yeah, they're very kind of open about what you want to do. What did you end up uh, racing in today? She was. I ran in the Kiger 1s. Um, so why run in the Kiger 1s when the 2s are out and the 3s are, I mean. The 3s, we have, have the 3s, yeah. 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 So a um, little bit of superstition. I hadn't won a race since I stopped wearing the 1s. And so I thought, and I, I've, I've been wearing 1s and B, I broke these out. Uh, just because they were sitting in my closet, and I had a pair of twos that I was wearing, and I just thought, oh, it's, I'm racing the twos, let's race in the ones again. And uh, I did, and that was it. Yeah, you, it wasn't too too scientific. I, I wore them two days back to back, and these just kind of called to me. So, aside from calling, <laughs> you know, this course is pretty non-technical. Personally, like, I do a lot of my trail running, period, and a lot of my, more of my trail racing in, in road flats. Yeah. So, I mean, you're on the Nike trail team, like, yeah. Do you got to run in trail shoes or? No, I think that, you know, I mean, Sally ran Sonoma last year in the Pegasus. Okay. And if it's, and Tim ran North Face in the Lunar Glides. Um, and it's, so if you want to be in the Lunar Race, whatever the Lunar Racer is at the moment. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. They, you know, they, they gave us a couple of pairs of those, um, you know, where they've fitted us out with the tempos. Um, literally any shoe that I want and I, I'll email Pat and just be like, hey, can I, you know, I'd, I'd like to wear these. And as long as that has kind of a specific purpose, as opposed to just being like, oh, give me these shoes. Um, yeah. Um, then they're, they're more than happy to oblige. And it's great because, you know, they've, they've got a huge range of shoes and it's, they're not kind of pushing any agenda on it. They're just like racing. So it's not like you're in the Kiger or the Wild Horse. No, and I mean, they they, obviously they love the trail guys to be in them and they, like, we wouldn't be wearing them if they didn't work. Totally. Um, but it would, you know, it's very nice that they're very, um, you know, accommodating. If you were running American River and you said, I want to run a race. Yeah. If I I want to run the Lunar Racer or the, the Lunar Racers or something for that race, they'd be like, fine. Yeah. What works for you? Nice. Yeah. Um, you had a bit of a, on the other side, you had a bit, a bit of an apparel feral failure today. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was the one revelation we had was. Were those, pro- were those these prototypes? No, th- these are the normal ones. So they gave us, they gave Lainey and I uh, these shorts, but they'd kind of like heat, heat sealed or ironed uh, pockets into the, into the, into another pair that they gave us for Western. Yeah. And we got a pair of. Short tights as well with kind of pockets fit on the outside. That's just not enough room. Uh, there wasn't enough pocket space. But the pockets in these, when I started the race today, I had two full piggy bars and ten goos in my shorts. And it looked a little funny because, like, it, it, gave me, it made it look like I had butt implants. I got several comments on it. I said they haven't taken yet. Just let it give it time. A little silicone. Um, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, so I, I got about, I had a little trouble getting, like, the second two piggy bars out just because they, they kind of sunk down really low. Yeah. And then I went to, to reach for some goos, and it was just impossible to get them out. And I think I got to the finish. Well, I, I got to mile 30, and one of my pockets fell out. Like, it literally fell out of my shorts. Like, it fell. It's not like you're, like, ripping something No, it, 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 like, I reached in there, and all of a sudden, I heard this thunk. And I turned around, and there was my pocket on the ground. I said, oh, shoot. Like, okay. I, and I, they, were, they were kind of starting to peel. You know, they weren't, they weren't sewn in, so I wasn't yeah. expecting it. Um, and they were so nice to make them for us in the first place, which they didn't have to do. Um, but, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a, little, a little frustrating not being able to kind of reach in there and but I had two front pockets that I had two goos in each and then um I had the waistband cinch so I could just slip the goos in and they just sat on so my So there's waist. perks to being sort of on the the pinnacle of uh performance but yeah. there's also like oh yep 
we got to revise that. Yeah, and so I think, you know, it's funny because this year, um, we, we, they usually debut the new uniforms at Boston, which they will be doing. Yeah. And this year, or last year, we got to wear the new ones the week before Boston. So we stood up in the whole neon green, which is very, you know, very loud and very obvious. Um, it wasn't very loud. <laughs> and there great. were a lot of us last year. There were, there were several of us, and kind of like this year. Um, but uh, but we were waiting a little bit longer this year, and I think there, you know, we've had several kind of feedback sessions with the designers about like, what do you need in a short? What do you want in a singlet? And they're kind of realizing like the trail needs are very different from the road needs because yeah. they, you know, they. I mean, they gave us these shorts, and it's funny because only Laney and I have the shorts in pockets. And everybody else on the team is like, well, shoot, where are we? I mean, even we like, don't I, have I don't have any Nike shorts, but like I have New Balance shorts or other, you know, road company shorts. They, they, have a, they, have they, a don't even have, they don't even have the Ford key pocket anymore. They have so, like one little zip pocket on the side. So ours, so yeah, so our, the Nike distance short has, has a, a key pocket, which you can fit like three goos in. So it's pretty good size. That's, that's and then, pretty big. And then they have a zipper pocket on the back that you can put four or five in. So you can carry a decent amount of fuel with them in them, but they're like they're the retail shorts. Yeah. Um, and so as a result, I mean, I don't know if you noticed it, but Tim raced in the race day shorts, which are, you know, just available online and Bach race in the short in the half tights. Um, and they both have more pockets than our race shorts do. Okay. Um, which, but they've, they've, they've realized that. And I think that was just something that they, they hadn't accounted for yet. And, um, you know, they came into it a little bit, a little bit fresh. Yeah. Um, and they've, they've learned very quickly. Um, you know, the feedback with the Kiger threes and the, and the wild horse threes, they've taken a lot of our feedback into consideration. I think it shows with the uniforms as well. When we get them, um, they'll be, you know, they'll be very different, not very different, but um, they'll be there'll be a specific trail. substantially different from the, the road and the track pro kit. Yeah. Uh, like same color scheme, but, you know, there'll be features that we have that will be different from those. So you just joined the piggy bar team with like Rob Carr, I believe. Yeah, and, Kerr's and, on there. And, and, you know, a bunch of other folks. But the concept to me of racing a, a 50 mile. Yeah. In like six hours, like, yeah. you know, all out intense effort and eating real food kind of blows my mind like um, is that something you would have done in the past yeah, or? yeah, yeah. i do it so i've, I've I mean, like for 100 I've, mile maybe like i want to have a little solid food, yeah so I, I had i had two piggy bars for breakfast <clears throat> which i think they're like 200 calories a piece um and then i i cut them and I've, I've the way i do it is i cut them in half mm -hmm. just like with a knife and put them in the wrap so they're you know they're the halves are wrapped mm -hmm. and just stick those in my you in put my like a little bit of tape or something no like, no just stick them straight in my shorts um that way i pull it out and pop the piggy bar out and put the wrapper back in gotcha um and yeah, I'm, I'm able to do that for the first, like, I guess two hours. So I, I try to eat one, I eat one or a half of a bar every three and a half minutes or three and a half miles. Hey, Danooch. Wow, we just got a, <laughs> we're getting a show. Not as much as Tinder gave us on the, on the trail. You eat Tinder? Full moon. You are on probation. I, I liked it. You're from San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Got <laughs> no, no comment. No cut. Good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm able to stomach that for about you know an hour and a half, two hours, and then I and then I switch to goo. Then you do switch um, to goo. Yeah, I'm, I'm an ambassador for goo, which is okay. great because they you know they're very liberal with their product, um, and it's yeah it's fantastic. That was one of the perks for Western last year having Maddie crew for me. When she was just like she showed up when we were doing a training run, she's like here and like like a twenty pound bag of goo that I'm I'm literally still pulling goos out of. I'm still you know. Having speaking from experience, they last at least five years. Oh, they're great! Yeah, yeah it's fantastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's and it's all that I wanted. And it's funny because um, both Picky Bars and Goozer are they're fairly sweet. Yeah. Um, and uh, at Western, it got a little kind of long in the tooth after eight, ten hours. It was like, all right, this is a lot of sweet. Um, yeah. That's when I switched to the pickles. <laughs> Um, coming into Forest Hill. So, have so, you talked to Magda about, uh, or or Lauren about a, a pickle flavor? Um, I, I don't know. Product? I think they're just like, just do a pickle by chop, man. Just, just go with that. It'll make you feel better in all senses of the word. Pickles. Um, yeah, I remember going up to Devil's Thumb and I saw that they had a little bowl of like sliced dill pickles and I took two of them and I was like, this is the best thing I've eaten. And then I got into Forest Hill and I said, I came up to the A station and they had every, you know, I mean, it's a buffet. Yeah. But they had no pickles. And so I said, Craig Thornley's right over there. Craig! No, they, had, they had him. They had him. So I, I asked. I asked. And, they, and I said, do you have pickles? And this lady produced the biggest jar of, like, corny shawls that I've ever seen. And it took all of my restraint not to just tip the jar up and start drinking the juice. I was like, no, other people You've done to, that before, haven't people, you? I have, I'm not. I'm not yet. But other people have to eat these, like... But I, I ate probably, like, 18 corny <laughs> shawls in... 30 seconds. Kobayashi, watch out. That was delicious. Yeah, it yeah. was amazing. But they have no no caloric value, which is the problem. 
It was like three calories a pickle. But damn, it was good. That was, that was incredible. Uh, my, my crew, my girlfriend, Rochelle, got very angry. She's like, what do you been eating? I said, pickle. She goes, that, that doesn't count. I said, but it's so good. She goes, I was like, obey the letter of the spirit of the law, not the, the letter of the law, not the spirit, right? She goes, no, no, you can't do that. You've got 35 miles to go. That's not okay. So I got the whip crap on me after that, but um, it's probably wise. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it worked out. Good crewing right there. Yeah, it was her first time crewing. She did a fantastic job. Back for Western States this year. She'll be, yeah, she'll be back. Uh, Magda, for, fortunately, unfortunately, qualified. Um, yeah. Way to go, Magda. Thank, thanks for ruining our crew. Um, so it's, yeah, so I've got her and Vargo and Tim Tollison. So Vargo will pace me again from Forest Hill to Green Gate. At least you know Vargo's not going to drink your beer. <laughs> And then Tim will have the Tim, Tim will, will drink it all. Tim will, Tim will have the finish. He'll have to deal with me for the finish. And I will gladly buy him many beers for that. And Vargo, I'll buy whatever he wants, within within reason. Yeah, Vargo. Don't you already have that off. nice truck and that nice bike. You're, you're pretty good on toys. <laughs> 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 well, uh, this has been an excellent interview. Absolutely, thank you. A ton of fun. I'm gonna borrow a line from AJW. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Check you later. <laughs> <laughs> and...